What a great day to be planning for your retirement. Here on Retiring Well, we have some great topics mapped out for you that we hope will help you find educational and actionable so you can start to live out your dreams of retirement. The first topic coming up, long-term investment strategies. Sometimes folks are like, hey, I'm retired. I don't need to be thinking long-term. Hey, you might be in retirement 20, 30, 40 years. What are some of these options and what do they look like out there? Then how to minimize taxes on taxable accounts. So again, looking at is there specific investment tools and strategies that can come into place so we can minimize those taxes so you don't have to pay unnecessary taxation over those times. Then getting into will we have a soft landing in the economy? Oftentimes you hear on the news this term soft landing when they're talking about interest rates and inflation and all that. What is that and why is that important to you as a retiree or an investor? And to wrap up the show this week, we're going to be talking about how to recover from a stock market loss. Maybe you're somebody that had poor performance over a certain time period or a bad year in that. What are some things to do that you can help recover more efficiently during that? So, so much more coming up right now here on Retiring Well. Retiring Well, brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring Well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring Well, plan to retire well. All right, let's talk about eight different strategies for long-term investing that really work, okay? Uh, the big key word there is long-term, okay? These are things that you stick with for the duration of your uh, investing time, okay? The first one is gonna be start early. Yes, get started, but start as early as possible. The magic of compounding is just amazing. Um, take for an example, you got a, a person that's investing Okay, they start at age 25 and go for the next 10 years until age 35. Let's say they put away $200 a month with an average rate of return of 7%. By the time they reach retirement age of 65, they're going to have north of $300,000 saved for retirement just in those 10 years of investing there and stashing money away, okay? Now let's do the flip side. Let's say that that person didn't start at 25, but waited until age 35, still did $200 a month, but continued that on until reaching age 65 with that 7% rate of return. Guess how much he'd have if he waited that 10 years uh, before investing. He'd only have $245,000 roughly saved for retirement at age 65. So you can see there, that's a huge difference between, okay, just investing for 10 years versus starting 10 years later and having to invest until you retire at age 65. That's a big difference. So it just really pays to start early. Okay, next up would be to diversify far and wide. What does that mean? Well, you know, everybody's kind of familiar with stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, but what about the different types of investments that are out there? Whether it's ETFs, annuities, treasuries, I mean, there's so many different investment tools out there. Make sure that you're investing for the long term, but very well diversified as well. Don't just stick with stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. Look at all the different options that are out there. Uh, number three, stay invested. I think Dave Ramsey was the one that said it best when he said, the only people that usually get hurt on a roller coaster are the ones that jump off, right? And that, that's so, uh, it just applies perfectly to the investment, investing world because you know the market is gonna go up and down. Stay invested, don't jump off that roller coaster because you gotta time it right twice, right? Time it right to get out once and then to get back in. And that's something that's very, very hard to do. Um, next one is make sure that you're sticking to your different asset allocations, okay? Um, you know, oftentimes we have clients where they've got a certain portion in stocks, a certain portion in bonds, annuities, and so forth. You know, you don't wanna make those emotional knee-jerk decisions to get out of one asset allocation because maybe the other one's doing well and so forth. That again boils down to timing, trying to time the market, and that is so hard to do. Um, up next, be the Goldilocks of cash. 
What does that mean, right? Um, it means to have some sort of um, money set aside, whether it's in cash or a safe short duration bond mix that you can draw from in times of market turmoil. Okay, so this should give you a little bit of peace of mind knowing, hey, I've got this portion set back in cash that I can use to take money from if the market's in a down um, position or you know going through that turmoil right so it provides that peace of mind um, also another one don't forget about taxes okay you've got that partner in your retirement accounts the IRS Uncle Sam they want their cut okay um, make sure that you're planning for that um, where are tax rates going to be 10, 15, 20 years down the road? These are something you should be paying attention to and meeting with your financial advisor or your accountant on an annual basis to determine what you can do within your retirement planning strategy to minimize taxes and get Uncle Sam out of your pocket as soon as possible. Um, number seven, keep costs low by using um, ETF. Uh, indexing strategies okay um, so this is awesome because you know typically there's no front-end loads or back-end loads when you're investing in different indexes or ETFs um, they also offer you some some diversification because within those ETFs you can track different sectors of the market so not only is it low cost but it's also helping with that diversification and then finally number eight um, make sure that you're diversifying your income streams as well so don't put all of your uh, retirement assets into those retirement accounts or pre-tax accounts um, look at Roth accounts as well and maybe a, just a normal brokerage account too because as you get closer out to retirement you're gonna want different income streams right and you don't want it all to be taxable so make sure you're taking a look at that as well all right if you have any questions on long-term investing strategies please don't hesitate to reach out and don't forget to follow us on YouTube as well If you like watching Retiring Well, make sure to go to youtube.com forward slash retiring well and click the subscribe button to never miss any of our TV shows and other informative videos. As you are planning for retirement, where is your journey taking you? Do you know where you are going? How are you going to get there? And what's the best route to take? Do you have a personal retirement roadmap? At Centennial Wealth Advisory, we specialize in retirement planning, and we have designed a complimentary retirement roadmap video series that can be customized based on your personal circumstance and preferences. There is no cost and no obligation. Simply go to sen-wealth.com forward slash roadmap and provide us with some basic information that will guide you to your on-demand customized retirement roadmap video. Planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. Hey, welcome to this segment on eight ways to minimize your taxes in taxable investment accounts. These are typically going to be like brokerage accounts. Uh, maybe you inherited one or maybe you even opened one up. What those look like is, I'm going to use, for my visual learners out there, I'm going to use this manipulative. So we buy a stock and it over time appreciates. What we're going to be talking about today is what are we going to do with that appreciated interest? or sometimes it's a, a bad investment and there's a loss. There's silver lining on both sides of that coin. And so here's some strategies about how to minimize the taxes on the interest that you have. Um, the first thing would be to understand the difference between the ordinary tax rates and the long-term capital gain tax rates. The first graphic that you're gonna see up on your screen will have our ordinary income rates. And what they do is each level of income gets taxed at a different rate. You look, you can follow where you are, whether you're single, married, married, filing jointly or separately. 
head of household and so forth. And what you're gonna see is it starts at 10%, and then you get to the next threshold, it goes to 12%, 22%, 24%, 32%, 35, and 37%. So depending on how much income you're making, you'll just go up the bracket. On the other side, we're gonna look at what the long-term capital gains rates are. Those have three different brackets I would like to highlight. They have 0% tax rate, 15% tax rate, and 20% tax rate. I hope your mind uh, and your eyes were drawn to that 0% tax. That's what we wanna try to hit. So how might we be able to do that? Let's first talk about some strategies. When you buy an asset in these taxable accounts and it makes money, if you sell that asset within a year, this money that you realize, that gain that you realize, is gonna go over onto the ordinary income tax rate, the first chart that I was talking about. If you wait a year longer, uh, if you hold the asset for at least a year, now this gain can go over to the better tax def um, preferred rates of the long-term capital gains. So you wait one year, one day, we sell this, and now we have a different rate that this gets taxed at. The next thing that you could do is consider a buy and hold strategy. This is where you buy a stock or a bond and you hold it. The only time a taxable event happens is when you sell that position. So when you buy and hold and it's making money, great. We want to stay aware of what those gains are, but by understanding the two different rates that you could get taxed at, you now can control how you want to deal with that gain. And what if there's a loss? I just had a client come in and uh, they had some bond strategies that were carrying losses. We sold those positions. We were able to realize a loss and I'll talk to you more about that in, in a, a later strategy here. But it was very tax efficient for them. The next thing that what happens when you're holding these stocks is that you might get um, a dividend. And so that dividend does become taxable unless you can get it to uh, become a qualified dividend. And there's some rules and some eligibility that you have to make sure that you look into in order for it to be a qualified dividend. But then that qualified dividend can move over to those long-term capital gain tax rates. Again, tax efficiency. The next thing that you might do is um, choose tax efficient bonds. It doesn't just have to be with stocks. You might get a muni bond, otherwise known as a municipal bond, maybe an I bond. Those were super hot um, this year and last year because of the interest rates and the inflation rate. Um, you might get uh, some U.S. Treasuries. And so when you're using those, the only thing you have to be careful of is uh, do the math between the rates. For example, let's say that you have a municipal bond um, paying, two, it's yielding 2% and you're in the 35% tax bracket. That would give you an after-tax yield of about 3.8%, 3.08% rather. Now, what you want to do is then compare that to what bonds are just paying in these taxable because it could, you could find that, yeah, it sounds cool that your muni bond is, it might be saving some taxes, but at the end of the day, if the yield isn't better on an after-tax standpoint, then let's go get the better return. Um, if you wanted to summarize all of that, then uh, the f previous five points, then what I would uh, be able to do that is what your asset allocation is when it comes to your different accounts. If you have tax efficient strategies, maybe those are better for your IRAs, your 401ks, your Roth IRAs. Tax efficient strategies in this taxable account would help you understand your tax uh, allocations, your asset allocations, and uh, could be a more effective way uh, for you to save taxes, not only in the year of, but in subsequent years. Uh, the next thing is to talk about maybe what a, uh, can, um, a charitable trust might look like. You know, if you want to donate uh, some of these appreciated assets to a trust, a charitable trust, there's a couple different options and that could give you not only the tax um, help on the year of contribution, um, but also has some rules on distributions. And so that, if that's of interest, definitely um, reach out and we can help you with that. And then finally, the tax loss harvesting, where sometimes we want to sell those underperforming assets in order to realize that gain and bring that into our tax account. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out at any time for a long-term tax plan. Have a great day. Retirement, something you've likely dreamed about for many years. 
Maybe you're approaching it here very soon or just recently retired. This is just for you then. Here at Centennial Wealth Advisory, we've created a retirement roadmap. Retirement is filled with many choices. What are you gonna do with the grandkids? What trips you're gonna go on? But first, we need to map out what this plan looks like. Where is the income gonna come from? What investments is gonna match up to produce that income? How are taxes gonna look and is there something that can be done to improve the situation today and for years down the road? Estate planning. What happens when you're gone and you're not here? What do you, would you like to see happen with your assets and your estate and all of your loved ones that are left behind? Healthcare. You know, all the different options that exist out there and how different levels of income may dictate how much you're paying for your health care. Putting all those things together in a roadmap is a vital thing to retirement success. And not only that, but the confidence that you can go into that, knowing you have a plan in place that allows you to enact all these dreams that you've had over the years. Simply go to our website at send-wealth.com and there's an area to click on to sign up for this retirement roadmap. You'll get instant download and you can watch it right away. And the beautiful thing is it asks just a couple questions and it hones in it and customizes it just for you in your particular situation. We hope that this video provides great value for you. And again, gives you the confidence heading into your retirement so you can plan to retire well. Living life isn't always easy. It puts up challenges and obstacles you'll have to overcome. There are responsibilities. You put in effort to provide and take care of your family, and to save and invest, to balance work and life. Planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. One of the questions floating around today is, will we have a soft landing for the economy? And, and soft landing makes me think of flying into Traverse City on a beautiful sunny day and, and no wind and everything. And it's just a controlled, gradual, no damage to the plane type of landing. Well, those words such as controlled, gradual, no damage may apply to our economy as well. So if the Fed with, with inflation can be somewhat stabilized, and if we then don't go to a recession, then that's what we would look at as, as a soft landing. Now, U.S. investors uh, may adjust based on the confidence that they have in both the stock market and the economy. In 2022, we saw inflation spike over 9%, as I'm sure all of you felt that at the grocery store and, and beyond. Now, that's the highest that we've seen since the early 80s. Some investors then decided that they were going to pull that money from the equity and bond markets amidst that turbulence. So you may have been one of those where uh, you're trying to time the market and you're just not as confident in what's happening as you're seeing the market having a, a major drop in 2022 in both the equity and the bond markets. And so maybe you started to pull money back. And, and when you look back to say March of 2022, the Federal Reserve then had, had stepped in and started to increase uh, interest rates from essentially about 0% upwards to approximately 5% that we stand at today. So we've seen interest rates come up now as people have then uh, started to look at what, what, some, what, some, what some of the more attractive options might be within the fixed interest rate environment. Now, on average, it takes about 12 to 18 months uh, to feel a material impact uh, on the economy when there is a rate hike. So again, that's about 12 to 18 months before you really start to see things change. And as of July of 2023, we've seen that consumer price index uh, rise about 3.2% from a year ago. So that's a somewhat promising statistic that, that maybe inflation has come back down to a little bit more normal levels. And the Fed tries to always balance the maximum employment 
along with stable prices and, and moderate those long-term interest rates. So how can a soft landing though change into a hard landing? Well, if labor costs continue to rise, then they're gonna cut into profit margins for these different businesses, which may create more layoffs. And now we're gonna see a higher uh, unemployment rate if that happens. And if interest rates rise too high, then businesses and consumers are gonna stop borrowing money. Uh, and that may curb some of the economic activity that's going on. So nobody knows for sure when or what will happen, but what are some of those things that you can be doing? Well, one, one thing to continue to educate yourself is go to our YouTube channel and, and you can like and subscribe and there's a lot of great information that talks about uh, the market and the economy and, and different tips that you might find valuable as you're trying to build your retirement plan. But again, it comes back to specifically looking at your retirement plan. And it doesn't always just come to the investment side of things. So often people are, are solely focused on, well, what's gonna happen next? What could impact my, my retirement savings this next three months, six months, 12 months? But what about looking at it from a little bit longer term perspective and making sure that not only you have the investment set up in a way from a diversification standpoint, but again, coming back to your comfort level with risk. And along with that, what are the tax implications uh, that you might have on your different investments? As we, as we sit here today, we know that, that taxes should remain uh, as they stand through 2025, but coming up in 2026, they may, may revert back to where they were before, so which was a little bit higher tax rate in most scenarios. So you'll wanna be paying attention to are there certain things that you can be doing with your retirement accounts uh, between now and 2025 to try and help you uh, lower your tax implications down the road? So if you're in a situation where you're unsure about the market, the economy, do you have a tax plan put together? Uh, we encourage you to give us a call here at Centennial Wealth Advisory. We'd love the opportunity to sit down with you for a no cost, no obligation, second opinion. What can Retirement Analyzer do for you? Retirement Analyzer is a software tool that can help you prepare today for your financial future. You've worked hard to save for your retirement, but as you near your retirement, you may have concerns. Have I positioned my retirement savings wisely? Have I saved enough for retirement? And will my savings last throughout my lifetime? What impact could inflation have on my future expenses? What if I suffer a long-term illness? Will I have enough money to cover my medical care expenses and still be able to meet my other financial obligations? Could changes in the income tax rates disrupt my retirement strategy? There's no need to be in the dark as you prepare for your retirement. Retirement Analyzer can help you find answers to all these questions and more. The first step is providing us with information on your financial assets, the type and current value of those assets, as well as your sources of income. Then, we work with you to identify your expected expenses in retirement. This will include a discussion of the lifestyle you envision in retirement, travel, a summer residence, whatever you dream your retirement will be. We'll input the information you provide us into the Retirement Analyzer, and in a very short time, we'll have reports that show us the percentage of assets currently in high-risk vehicles, as well as the percent in lower-risk products. Retirement Analyzer enables us to project your income from year to year in your retirement and see how long your retirement savings may last. As we change the conditions of the report, delaying your retirement date, including costs for long-term care, adjusting the expected tax rate, or adjusting your retirement strategies, we can see how changes in these variables may impact your income in retirement and the longevity of your retirement savings. Let the Retirement Analyzer help you test drive your retirement strategy today, because the time to discover the bumps in the road is not once your trip through retirement has begun. Contact our office today to schedule an appointment for your Retirement Analyzer review. As you are planning for retirement, where is your journey taking you? Do you know where you are going? How are you going to get there? And what's the best route to take? Do you have a personal retirement roadmap? At Centennial Wealth Advisory, we specialize in retirement planning, and we have designed a complimentary retirement roadmap video series that can be customized based on your personal circumstance and preferences. 
There is no cost and no obligation. Simply go to sin-wealth.com forward slash roadmap and provide us with some basic information that will guide you to your on-demand customized retirement roadmap video. Planning is the first step to succeeding. Plan to retire well. Let's talk about how to recover from a stock market loss or an investment loss here. So I want to talk about four main parts with this here. First, we're going to talk about emotional. Then we're going to talk about spending, investments in general, and then the plan. So the first is the emotional part. You know, when you have a loss like this, a, a financial loss, even if it is just on paper, if you will, when you see that balance go from point A to point B, a, a lesser value, it's normal to feel hurt, to feel like you have a loss, to be frustrated. And it's also normal to feel like you have to take action and do something. But before we take an action and do something irrational, let's walk through a few things first. One, think about spending. Do I need this money right now or in the very near future? And if I do, probably should have been invested differently to start with, but is there other things I can do to maybe look at using another resource before having to sell this at a loss? Or if this is money I'm using as income, maybe I'm retired, can I can wait maybe on that spending or can I, can I do something different? So again, if spending this particular money is important, we gotta look at this a little bit differently. From an investment perspective, keep in mind this first. So if I have a 10% loss, I'm gonna need about an 11% gain to get my money back. If I have a 20% loss, I need about 25% to get it back. 30% loss, I need 43% or so to get that back. And what if I had a 40% loss? Well, boy, I need a 67% gain just to get back to even. So again, when we're looking at investing, make sure you understand those risks associated with the various investments that you have. So you know, losses are always something that potentially could happen when we're investing depending upon what you're doing. Brings me to my last point here. Stick to your plan. Whenever we have investments, it should fit into a bigger overall picture. Whether that's a retirement plan, if that's what we're focused on, saving for something specific like a maybe a home purchase or down payment or college or something like that. So make sure you have a plan mapped out. One of when you're gonna need this money, but how is this invested? And also so you have this risk tolerance picture in place for you. So you're not surprised or blindsided by these larger losses. Again, if you're concerned about this, or if this has recently happened to you with this market loss or investment loss, give us a call at the number on the screen. We'd love to sit down with you, walk through this, and see if we can help you so you can plan to retire well.